very good afternoon one and all it's my privilege uh, to introduce our next guest speaker uh, dr uh, respected rr deshpande sir dr rajendra deshpande sir is a retired professor emeritus of sharir kriya from ayurved college akurdi pune he is a prolific writer and he has wrote written more than 50 books on ayurveda he has produced more than 100 plus audio visual aids he has visited more than 52 countries for the propagation of ayurveda presented many papers at national as well as international seminars he had been invited as the guest speakers at many national as well as international conferences and he has received many prestigious awards so i would like to request respected dr rajendra deshpande sir to please proceed with his lecture over to you thank you thank dr. you very much sir namaskar namaste so, namaste vage nice. sir platform namaste how are you fine fine okay uh, can you hear me properly everybody is hearing me properly yes yes, yes, yes sir okay my yes, video sir. is also clear Yes sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes sir. So, with your kind permission, can I start my talk? Yes sir. Please proceed. Yes sir. Okay. So, my dear friends, today we would like to talk on a special topic which is very interesting. That is Ayurvedic terminology. Because I personally feel that when the students come from the twelfth standard, ah, uh, eleven, twelfth standard, and when they enter into the Ayurved sector, that is something entering into the new country try to understand i am giving example that i am visiting from india to germany or india to america especially i am talking about germany or the spain because there is a most important problem is a problem of language because when we enter into the german we must greet to the airport guten morgen we get a sinan if you talk in that fashion to that custom officer he will be very very happy but i can talk like this because i know that when i go to the germany i should know a little bit about germany when i go to the spain and when i say hola como estamos that means i talk in spanish good morning how are you if i talk to the person i meet in the spain or in germany in their language these people get very much what you can say the delighted oh my god this person is from us similarly when you enter after 12th of your physics chemistry and biology physics has its own language chemistry has its own language and also biology has its own language like for example you always know about digestive system respiratory system nervous system everything you know protein carbohydrate fats everything you know but when the students they enter for ayurveda they just get jumbled when they hear the words what pitt kaf bhut mahabhut oh my god what is this nonsense because they are not exposed at any time in their life unless and until they enter into the ayurvedic country i am saying this is ayurvedic culture ayurvedic country and if you want to get succeed in this particular uh, nation ayurveda nation ayurveda country ayurveda culture you must aware that there is a specific language of ayurveda i am not talking about sanskrit uh, that is something different sanskrit is a mother tongue of all the languages mother tongue of germany mother tongue of english mother tongue of ayurved but i am talking about ayurvedic terms when you say proteins you immediately understand what is meant by pulse pulses and nuts and all these things carbohydrate sugar and all these things fats oils and ghee etc but when you say ayurved you just get confused oh you only you know that this is something uh, uh, like bams a doctor another doctor like allopathic doctor another uh, ayurvedic doctor then homeopathic doctor that much only new but i i am here to give you the insight of that particular specific terms used in ayurveda at the very beginning of your career because this is your new start in your life you are going to be a master in ayurveda 
Okay, so let us start to discuss about Ayurvedic terminology. Myself, Professor Dr. Rajendra Raghuvir Deshpande. First, we will make a Swasti Vachana. I think this is again a one term of Ayurveda. This is the terminology Swasti Vachana. Swasti is a holy thing, pure. Huh? And the Vachana is a chanting. So this is nothing but the chanting of prayer or chanting of holy mantra. Everybody knows this particular shloka. So please sit straight and uh, close your eyes and fold your hands and let us chant this particular very holy mantra. Oh. 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 Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Saksha Parabrahma, Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha, O Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Salute to you, salute to the divine power, salute to each and every Guru. Each and every person is my guru in this particular earth, on this particular earth. Okay. First, I would like to thank respected principal Dr. Subhash Vage, sir, and his whole team of faculty and organizing committee. Dr. Vage, sir, as I know about Dr. Vage, sir, he is a very dynamic personality in the field of Ayurveda. He is a best administrator, best Ayurvedic consultant, best professor, best author, best organizations, so on and so forth. So, Dr. Vage, sir, I salute for your dynamic personality. Uh, let us start ahead about this lecture. This lecture is not a big cinema. Try to understand. This picture will be like a small trailer or in a latest fashion, it is also called the teaser. Uh, so this picture, uh, this video, this particular lecture is only a trailer or only a teaser. Each and every details of each concept of each word, you will be learned from your respected teachers, respected professors. So kindly excuse me if I cut short a particular concept. Because of the time restraint, I cannot go too much ahead. I will also try to complete my lecture little bit within time and also little before time so that the students can interact with me if they have any doubts about my lecture or other than my lecture. Huh? Okay, so let us start to begin with I think you are already familiar with this word because you have taken the admission, but I will try to make some specific remarks in each particular, uh, whatever the slide over there, because everybody knows what is Ayurveda. Ayushaha Vedaha Ayurvedha. Ayush, Ayu is a life and Ved, Vida Vindati. You can make the notes. Vida Vindati is the main root dhatu, Sanskrit dhatu in the word Veda. Veda is a knowledge, Rugved, Yajurved, Samaved, Atharved, everything you know. But what is exactly Veda? Vida Vindati. To know knowledge. So Ayurveda is nothing but knowledge of our life, knowledge of every person on this earth. So this is in short, this is a life science. Write down this word. Ayurveda is a life science. Second sentence is more important. Ayurveda is not only medical science, but Ayurveda is life science. It will tell you something beyond that preventive measures, beyond from the treatments. There will be philosophy of life, how you should live. So Ayurveda is not only medical science, this is a philosophical science. And this concept is very important because in our life, when we are living, we agree that Bhagavad Gita is a philosophy to us. Similarly, Ayurveda is also a philosophy. Try to understand this concept. This is the importance of this life. Next, there is always a question from the, uh, the faculty or the friends that are admitted in the MBBS course that are admitted in the modern science and they will ask, oh, Ayurveda, that old science, do you have any speciality? Do you have any super speciality? Do you have any consultancy concept? 
then you must answer yes ayurveda has a different branches ayurveda has a speciality and super speciality when you will complete your bms you have the wide horizon wide horizon to do the post graduation md or ms is available each and every subject you do, can do the phd you can do the research you can do your consulting practice you can start your pharmacy so a lot of scope for ayurveda is there now this is the golden era of ayurveda after that takshashila and nalanda when you read about the golden golden days they, this is now the golden era for ayurveda there are the branches kaay bal grah urdhvang shalya dashtra jalavrusham ashtang ayurveda eight super specialties of ayurveda you can be master in any pathy or any branch that you want after completing bms in bms you will learn all these branches first year second year third year bms you will learn about each topic but then in the md or ms you will you will can be the consulting physician you can be ayurvedic pediatrician you can be ayurvedic ophthalmologist you can be ayurvedic surgeon you can be ayurvedic sexologist oh yes it is possible so let us see kaya is an internal medicine kaya chikitsa kaya means fire digestive fire ayurveda says all diseases are because of the weak w e a k digestive fire weak metabolic process rogaha sarve api mande agnam rogaha sarve api mand agnam the diseases from cold to cancer are related according to ayurveda to the weak metabolic process and the master to treat to make homeostasis of that metabolic process is called according to ayurveda as a kaya chikitsak because one meaning of the kaya is agni another meaning is a physical body with including mind bal bal is a pediatrics the science regarding the children from the birth up to the 16 years of age grah grah is something invisible things so when you talk about invisible thing they can be categorized in two things one is your psychological things psychological problems psychiatric problems where the actually the pathogens cannot be seen by the naked eye as well as with the microscope you cannot see so that grah chikitsa means the psychiatric treatments or the treatment of infectious diseases microorganisms like bacteria viruses fungi in ayurveda there are the words rakshas bhut pishach don't get stung this is not related with your the concept of marathi ghost and all these things this is something invisible microorganisms or pathogens or the antigens okay then urdhvang urdhva ang urdhva means up up to what this is the clavicle above your collarbone above your clavicle whatever the, the the organ that you are especially ears nose uh, throat e n t with eyes that is called as ophthalmology so urdhvang includes ear nose throat that is e n t and eyes problem ophthalmology shalya is a surgery dashtra bite teeth dashtra means teeth the bite by the poisonous animal for example bite by the rabid dog you know the dog bite you know the snake bite what they do they pour the toxins in your body so dashtra is nothing but a science of toxicology and many times the toxin is used for the suicide for the uh, uh, commitment the uh, what you can say the murder so that is the science related with the toxins so toxicology with medical jurisprudence medical jurisprudence court nyaya vaidyak then jara jara is the geriatrics problem related with the old age nowadays your age is increasing but quality of life is decreasing so there are, is a requirement of the specialist who can treat only the aged people so geriatric doctors are there then vrushan 
is related with your sexual capacity. It may be the problem of infertility. It may be the problem of impotency or erectile dysfunction. It may be the problem of premature ejaculation. So these Ayurveda science give a lot of philosophy, lot of medicines, lot of lifestyle guidance with relation to all these branches. So this is called the Ashtanga Ayurveda. When we talk of Ayusha Veda, Ayurveda, what is Ayu? Ayu is a life, Jivita Kalaha, from birth to death. Jivita, life span from birth to death. But the clear cut definition is Sharira, Indriya, Sattva, Atma, Sanyogodhari Jivitam. Amalgamation. Amalgamation of what? Sharira, physical body, Indriya, sensory and motor organs. Like in according to Ayurveda, Jnanendriya and Karmendriya. Jnanendriya, sensory organs. Karmendriya, motor organs. And Ubhayendriya, that is mind. But here in this particular shloka, mind is having a special importance. So Sattva, mind, and Atma is a soul principle, life principle. Okay. So when we talk about life, we have to consider at physical level, at metaphysical level, at psychological level, at spiritual level. So these levels of understanding we are getting from the shloka, levels of understanding. When we treat the patient, you are not treating only physical body. You are trying, is there any correlation of your body problems with the sensory organs, with the motor organs, with the mind, with your philosophy? Is there any connection? When there is a psychological problem, you try to find out the relation with the other three factors. Okay, so this is important with this shloka. Next, another important, when we say Sharira, Indriya, Sattva, Atma, let us talk about what is exactly physical body, human body, according to Ayurveda. We, you know about in 12 standard, cells are there, a group of cell tissue is there, similar functioning tissues becomes, make the organ, similar functioning organs make the system, everything you know in the 12 standard with biology. Am I right? But here, Ayurvedic concept, Shiryate Tacchariram, the important feature from the birth to death, we have the anabolism and catabolism. Chaya pachaya. Insight plus and minus. In the childhood, we have more anabolism. So we are growing up. We are growing up. Catabolism is there, but very, very minute, negligible. In the young stage, middle age, we have the anabolism is equal to catabolism. But still, you must accept that catabolism is exist. And in the old age, degeneration, catabolism is more predominant. Is it clear? So that's why to indicate the importance of catabolism, the phrase is shiriyate tachariram, which is having the degeneration nature, by nature. When you, are, when you come on this earth, it is definite and 100% clear that you are going to die. You are going to die. How we can understand? Shiriyate tat shariram. Okay. Another important feeling. Tatra shariram nam chetana dishthana bhutam pancha mahabhuta vikara samudayatmakam samayogavahi. Your body is composed of five basic elements. Pancha mahabhuta. Three words are there. Pancha means five. Maha and Bhuta. What is write down? Because it is very, uh, very few people explain in a depth. Bhu Bhavati. How that Bhuta word has come? Write down. Bhu, Sanskrit, Bhavati, to exist. These elements were exist on this earth. These elements are existing on this earth. And these five elements will exist in the future. So there is no end, no start for they are there, they were there and they will be there. Huh? So that is these five basic elements. Prithvi, Aap, Tej, Vayu, Akash. These five elements. But these are Mahabhuta. Why they are called as Maha? Because they are all pervading. Sarvam idam panchabhutikam asmin arthe. On this earth, each and every element, each and every element, it may be organic, it may be inorganic, 
each and every element the trees mountains your table desk your fountain pens your body mind everything is made up from five basic elements okay but what we see with your naked eyes is not directly mahabhut because they are beyond our sensory perception you cannot see mahabhut never you cannot see the prithvi oh sir we are saying we are we are sitting on the floor <laughs> we are writing on the bench it is it this is not prithvi mahabhut write down this is parthiv can you see this word vikar what is pancha mahabhut vikar pancha mahabhut vikar means the elements formed from the pancha mahabhut prithvi will give the parthiva dravya substances jala mahabhut but the substances jaliya what you drink in your uh, what you can say the lunch break water drinking water even some have the bottles with their side and they are drinking water in between how they are exhausted with the thoughts of dr dish pandey <laughs> Huh? so this bottle which contains the water is the jala mahabhut this is the question at the examination we always ask tell him that sir this my water bottle water inside the water bottle is not jala mahabhut that water is jaliya the substance formed from the jala mahabhut is it clear so what we see with the naked eye with our senses are not the pancha mahabhut that's why they are mahabhut they are pancha mahabhut vikara they are together samudaya and also samayoga is more important samayoga coordination jala water thanda thanda cool cool dehydration in the summer season we drink lot of water okay in our body there is water but also there are digestive juices okay both digestive juices enzymes pitta tej mahabhut they are hot hot water is cold how they will manage with each other like our five fingers panch mahabhut like five fingers ha huh? you can see there are difference in the length there is a difference in the breadth but still they work together that's why i can eat if my thumb will say oh thumbs up i am very special then if it stop stop working can i eat can i eat no not possible not possible this is the case that samayoga vahi inside coordination amongst themselves is very important and they should be fed they should be pushed energy matter energy source is required because panch mahabhut they are like matter but you require when action dynamism dynamism is there then energy and matter is very important so chetana is atma soul principle is the energy the pancha mahabhuta they themselves they don't have energy they need some force of energy that is coming through the chetana dishtan bhutam so this is the life force this is oxygenation this is the glucose whatsoever you call it but this is something that pushing the energy inside the cells that energy is very important this pancha mahabhuta prithvi earth aap water tej fire vayu air akash space bhuta bhubavati to exist and mahabhuta all pervading now basic elements of our body this is the another principle of ayurveda principle siddhanta are very important ayurveda is called as a shashvat write down shashvat eternal so this is our uh, what you can say the uh, glorious part that why we can uh, push our chest and all oh, we have the thousand years old history but this is sometimes can be the point of criticism can be the point of criticism write down because many people say oh that is too old outdated science no 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 ayurveda cannot be outdated science ayurveda cannot be outdated science ayurveda is a time tested science write down it is not outdated it is time tested science are you getting my point why why because when we say ayurveda is the best we say because of its principles siddhant principle fundamental principles that ayurveda has given is really really a treasure to the medical field 
and that siddhanta has kept ayurveda science as time tested practice of ayurveda has been changed there is a lot of progress in ayurvedic science itself from the samhita kal from the veda kal actually you know that ayurveda is the upaveda of atharva ved there are too many references in atharva ved about the three dev and about the three dosha about the human body organs vrk and gavini kidney and ureters but in atharva veda or any vedas the science of the health science of the human beings body and health that was scattered scattered there is no logical base for that but when samhita came into existence this scattered and what you can say the without cause and effect relationship the science was converted into the scientific manner by charaka sushruta and vagbhata but there is also a development in charaka sushruta and vagbhata charak was the master of consulting physician kaya chikitsa master charakastu chikitsite sushrut what is sushrut who is sushrut sushrut is a master of surgery shalya tantra this is a development in the ayurved science itself try to understand sushrut was the first and sushrut is also be mentioned by the modern surgery books as a father of surgery write down this word sushrut has been quoted by the modern surgery books surgery authors surgery surgeons that sushrut is a father of surgery what he has done like plastic surgery shar sutra chikitsa rakta mokshana chikitsa it is unbeatable unbeatable the masterpiece of sterilization process and all these things but what but was very clever kashtanga rudaya he understand that the way it will come into the kali yuga ayurved will be learned and taught in the kali yuga the people are will be very very lazy people will be lazy they want the small booklets they want a small guide and that's why i personally feel that ashtanga rudaya is the best guide of ayurved because it compilation of charak compilation of sushrut and best a very short book in a poetry manner you can learn by heart in kerala south indian part ayurveda is supposed to be run by families to family generation to generation and you will be surprised that many families have ashtanga rudaya on their tip of tongue yes it is true on the tip of tongue so everybody of you can get this idea that if you can learn ashtanga rudaya by tip of tongue you will be master in ayurveda take it from me okay but this is what i am talking about that practical applications may have been changed but the basic principles remain the same one of the important principle dosha dhatu mala moolam hi shariram our human body is composed of dosha dhatu and mala doshas are vat pitta and kapha dhatu seven sapt dhatvatmak purush seven body tissues ras rakt mans med asthi majja and shukra and mala moolam sorry mala mutra purush and sweat these are like the roots of trees moolam means roots like the roots the nourishment to the trees is coming maintained whole trees maintained by the proper quality of roots and when it is degraded when it is degenerated then whole tree collapsed so moola is responsible for utpatti sthiti and laya creation maintenance and destruction so these dosha dhatu mala the physiology is depend pathology is depend and also of course the treatment is also depend on basic three gross elements of our human body what the can be compared of course i know that original sanskrit mool dhatu and their concept is also important but as you are coming from the 12th standard i want to remove your fear i want to remove your fear i want to make you confident in ayurveda that's why a little bit parallel english translation i want to make for simplicity purpose only because if i talk on a superficial level just sanskrit and all this uh, derivation and epidemiology you will not understand 
So these are personally, I feel, vata pitta kapha are nothing but the bio energies, bio energy, because on them whole body physiology is depend. Kinetic bio energy, especially it is related with movement, all types of movement, subtle to gross. Lap dap lap dap. Who is doing vata dosha? Inspiration, expiration. Who is responsible? Vata dosha. Peristaltic moment, who is responsible? Vata dosha. My nerve conduction, who is doing? Vata dosha. Movement across the cell membrane. This is the topic of your syllabus. Who is doing? Who is pushing the glucose inside? That is Vata dosha. Okay? Pitta is responsible for thermal bioenergy, transformation process, conversion, digestion, and metabolism is responsible by, or this is related with the Pitta dosha. Kapha dosha is a like mechanical energy, which can give the nutrition. Kapha dosha can give the stability, and kapha dosha can responsible for growth of the cells, growth of the body, etc. Next, dhatu can be compared or can be called as like a body tissues. In the modern physiology, there are only four tissues, but in Ayurveda, there are seven tissue concepts. Rasa can. I am not saying that rasa is equal to plasma. I am not saying rasa is equal to water. I know this is very superficial comparison, but still, as a matter of understanding and matter of confidence, yes, this comparison can be done. Nothing to be worried about. Nothing to be worried about. It is not too different. Okay. So rasa includes plasma, intracellular fluid, extracellular fluid, and the main function of rasa dhatu in our body is pre na na, pre na na, instant energy. How? Water and electrolyte balance. When you are coming from the hot sun or you are moving in the hot sun and when you drink sugarcane juice, what happens? When you drink the kokum sarbat, when you drink the lemon sarbat, what happens? Prinana. Remember this word. Prinan is instant water and electrolyte energy. That is because of rasadhatu. But if you are weak, W E K, your patient is with tuberculosis, with the cancer, with the HIV, and he has lost the proteins, weight loss is there. And then you give some nourishing food. It may be the, your roti, chapati, green gram, mung dal, or it can be even eggs. Yes, Ayurveda accepts this. Ayurveda accepts. But that slowly gaining the weight. It's called as a bruhana in Ayurveda. Getting your muscles back, this mouse dhatu. So there is a difference in prinan and bruhana terminology, Ayurvedic terminology. Then rakta is related with the blood cells, red blood cells, hemoglobin, oxygenation, G1. If you get the road accident and lot of blood loss is there, the patient may die. And that is why. When you go for any emergency visit, casualty visit, you first check, first check what pulse, pulse rate, when blood is totally lost, low blood pressure takes place and collapsed of the pulse. Can you see collapsed of the pulse? So in emergency, you don't see another things. You don't check for muscles. You don't check for bones. Is there any fracture? Is there any muscle loss? No, no, no. Emergency. Oxygenation, pulse rate is very important as related with the Rakta Dhatu, cardiovascular system. Mouse Dhatu is related with the muscles, ligaments, many things are there, fascia, but mainly Mouse Dhatu is Akanchana Prasarana, flexion and extension movements that is done with the Kandara, Snayu, okay? Medha can be compared with adipose tissue, fat tissue is responsible for maintaining the fatty structure of your body. Proper Fat storage that gives you the unchastness, snigdhata. Okay, so snigdha, unchastness, lubrication is depend on medh dhatu. Asti dhatu, that for example, my humerus, radius and ulna, femur, osseous tissue, bones, they support the organ, and my vertebral column is supporting my whole body. Okay, majja dhatu is compared with the context. As per the reference, it has a different meaning. Sometimes it can be compared with the bone marrow, red bone marrow. Sometimes it can be compared with the nervous tissue, nerve conduction. Huh? And it is responsible for purana function because my brain is inside the cranium, filling the cranial cavity. 
that was purana are you getting my point shukra is a spermatozoa and ovum reproductive tissue and responsible for garbhotpadana but remember this is not only fertilization and getting the progeny shukra dhatu is responsible for regeneration of each cell of your body okay next waste products mutra is compared with the urine or it is urine expel the watery waste part which is called as a clad in ayurveda clad remember this terminology urea in urea in urine you get the maximum amount of water and the urea u r e a that is the waste product of protein metabolism am i right so that waste part different waste parts are there all the material that is going to the urine organic and inorganic they are called as a clay the in ayurveda clay the is a subtle waste products created at the tissue metabolism next is a purisha that is stool matter fecal matter and fecal matter is also important that's why every day morning get the bowel opened that is the most delightful condition for the whole day the person who is getting very normal stools early in the morning once or maximum twice and whole day he is very very enthusiastic and happy because his metabolic process is going on no good 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 in the stomach no gases no indigestion no vomiting no belching nothing no flutters so everything is normal so because many people say what to think about best products but ayurveda has given the importance to the best products at a similar level to the dosha and the dhatu samadosha samagnishcha samadhatu malakriya proper urination proper defecation is a basic requisite to maintain the physiology remember this thing i can give the very simple but bad example in your house you have the big worshiping place dining hall is there sitting room is there but if your toilet is blocked oh what will happen in house when the toilet is blocked what is happening no use of your dining hall no use of your sitting room no use of worship worshiping place you cannot sit anywhere so that is this condition proper urination proper bowel opening is very important and that's why this is our important question when we take the clinical history or the history of the patient sway the sweat in the in this particular summer season now uh, in the nagpur i think the temperature may be 46 47 48 8 take take care take care i request all of you please take care huh? as much as protect from your sun because you know what is happening sun stroke sun stroke is very common in rajasthan in nagpur what is happening in the sun stroke do you know the simple sign how you can diagnose the sun stroke when the patient is lying on the road how you can diagnose that patient is a normal fainting because of the hot sun or he has a sun stroke let me clear this point and you can write down note down this point sun exhaustion sun fainting because of the sun you will see that whole person is dubbed or drenched with a lot of sweat his whole clothes are wet sweating is profuse sweating that is okay that is okay there is a protective mechanism when he exposed to the sun but in the sun stroke what is happening you will find his body is red red hot red hot touch red hot but there is absolutely no drop of sweat in sun stroke cases i am talking about sun stroke this is the difference in sun exhaustion and sun stroke sun exhaustion lot of sweating in sun stroke red body whole body becomes red very very hot his brain center has lost the control thermal regulation has been lost and that is called as a sun stroke so no sweating is there so sweating is also important at particular time definition of ayurveda hita itam sukham dukham ayustasya hita itam manam cha tachye troktam ayurveda sauchate the details will be taught by your teacher but i am making a, a, your your uh, what you can say the attention in this word man because many times it is said blamed that ayurveda is a qualitative science it doesn't has any measurement this is wrong from the definition itself they are talking about man man means praman praman means measurement charak himself is telling you in sutrasthan in the beginning of his teaching that man is very important 
We give the medicines by measurement. We examine the pulse rate. We examine the heart rate. Yes, it is also mentioned in Ayurveda, Nadi Pariksha. Vegavati Nadi, Dhruta Nadi, Manda Nadi. These are the words given in the Ayurveda. So Ayurveda everywhere. What is childhood? From the age of birth to the 16 years. Then in the beginning, Shirada, Shiranad, for the six months, then six to two years. Everything you will find that there is a mention of quantitative matter as well, not only qualitative. So Ayurveda is not only qualitative science, but it has a dimension of quantitative science as well. Aim of Ayurveda, Swastasya Swastrakshanam and Aturasya Vikara Prashamanam. Swastha is a healthy person. So Ayurveda, Charak is saying, first you should talk about prevention. Unfortunately, our PSM subject is in the second year. But we learn here Prakriti Parikshan. Biotype, constitution, and that's why you can adjust your lifestyle. When I visit this uh, 20 years in the foreign countries, majority times I work in the places where the people come not only for the disease treatment, but they come for the prevention. They want anti-aging treatment. They want that they are healthy, but they want to remain healthy. What to do? So I do their Prakriti Parikshan, I do their Sara Parikshan, qualitative examination of Dhatu is called as a Sara Parikshan. Predominance of Doshas is called as a Prakriti Parikshan. And next is Atur, Atur means patient. If you have the patient, Vikara Prashamanam But when I say to maintain the health of a healthy person, who is healthy according to Ayurveda? According to Ayurveda, Samadoshaha Samagnishcha Samadhatu Malakriya Prasanna Atma Indriya Manaha Swastha Iti Abhidhyate given by the Sushru Surgeon. He is defining the healthy person. That I am want to make attention again on the word Sama. Because at the 12th standard, you have learned the word homeostasis. Homeostasis is equilibrium. Homeostasis is a balanced nerve. That's why Ayurveda says when your body doshas, pata pitta kapha, sapta dhatu, agni, metabolic process, mala, waste products, when they are balanced, when they are equilibrium, when they are in homeostasis, not excess, not low, then only you can say yourself as a healthy person. But this is physical level. At a metaphysical level, there is a prasanna, atma, indriya, manaha. Ayurveda also talks about the mind soul principle and indriya how you can test that your mind is healthy so that is there is specific prasannatva even teachers i request all the teachers please write down how you can define the prasannatva because it is learned by me from the very senior vaidyas in the pune this is given in the ashtanga sangraha indutika please note it down i i, I don't remember the exact reference but how you can test the prasannatva manaha amodena please write down Manaha Amodena. Amoda means Ananda, happiness. If the person is happy and joyful, that is his mind is happy without any reason. That, oh, when, when I get uh, one lakh or one K bank balance, then I will be happy. That is not really happiness. Amoda. Without any reason, if you find a person is happy, then there is Amoda. Manaha Amodena. Then Indriya. Prasadena. Sorry, sorry. Indriya Patutvena. Please write down. Indriya Patuta. Patuta means skill. If your uh, senses are very sensitive and powerful, that is called as a Patuta in Sanskrit. Very skillful, your activity of the sensory and motor organs. And Atma Santoshena. Atma Prasannatva. How to define? Santoshena. Samadhan. Satisfaction. Gratification. That is something beyond Anand. Samadhan is something different than happiness. Satisfaction is something very, very special entity in our human life. So try to get the satisfaction. Then, cause of health and disease. Vikruta, avikruta, deham, gnanti, te vartayanti. Te means dosha, dhatu and mala. When they are vikrita, pathological state, dosha, dhatu and mala, then they gnanti, they destroy your physiology. Granti, destroy your physiology and you become patient. But when they are avikrita, they are physiological, vartayanti cha, they maintain your body as healthy in equilibrium in homeostasis. Next, pathology, 
दोष धातु मल इम्पॉर्टन्स ऑफ दोष धातु मल इन दी कंडीशन समदोषा समाग्निश्च समु मल क्रिया इक्विलिब्रियम इज इम्पॉर्टेंट बट हाउ दे आर इम्पॉर्टेंट दोष एंड धातु और दोष एंड मल इन द इन द डिज प्रोसेस पैथोजेनेसिस संप्राप्ति आयुर्वेदिक वर्ड इज अ संप्राप्ति पैथोलॉजी ऑफ द डिजीज दोष दिश्च समूर्चना जनित व्याधि ही दोष वात पित्त कफ वेन दे गेट डिस्टर्ब विशिएटेड प्रोवोकड वात पित्त देन दे डू नॉट कीप क्वाइट वात पित्त कफ ऑलवेज से दैट दे आर लाइक द गॉड्स एंड दे आर लाइक द डेमन्स वेन दे आर इन अ फिजियोलॉजिकल स्टेट दे आर लाइक गॉड्स वेन दे आर पैथोलॉजिकल दे आर लाइक डेमन्स Okay, so when they be become pathological, they attack. They attack on the dhatu and mal. They attack on the rasa dhatu. They attack on the rakta dhatu, and the disease is created. Try to understand. There is a two type of the uh, uh, what you can say the bonding in the dosha and dhatu. Normal bonding of dosha and dhatu for the teachers. This is for the teachers. Physiological natural bonding of dosha and dhatu. It's called as the ashraya ashrayi samband. Ashraya ashrayi samband. Pitta is working through the media of rakta and swed. Okay, vata is working with the media of the bone or osseous tissue. Ashraya ashrayi samband. Students, please excuse me. This is physiological ashraya ashrayi samband. And samurchana is a pathological bonding. Pathological bonding. Huh? You have you seen the Munna Bhai MBBS? Pyar ki jhappi. प्यार की झप्पी चप्पी झप्पी व्हाट इज इट मे बी दैट इज फिजियोलॉजिकल बट वेन शिवाजी हैज पियर्स हिज वाग नख इन द एबडोम ऑफ द अफजल खान एंड मेक हिम डाय दैट इज समूर्चना सो दिस इज पैथोलॉजिकल दिस वर्ड इज पैथोलॉजिकल समूर्चना इज अ रॉन्ग यूनियन कॉम्बिनेशन बॉन्डिंग ऑफ द दोष एंड धातु ओके नेक्स्ट वॉट इज ट्रीटमेंट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू ट्रीट पेशेंट या भी क्रिया भी जायंते शरीर धातवा समा सा चिकित्सा विकारण कर्म तत् विशिजा स्मृत वॉट से एवर यू डू यू मे बी गिव दथ्यापथ्य डायट्री एडवाइस लाइफ स्टाइल एडवाइस मेडिसीन आहार विहार एंड औषधि शोधन एंड शमन एक्सटर्नल एंड इंटरनल वॉट सो एवर ड्यू दैट मेक्स द शरीर धातवा समा हियर धातु मीन्स नॉट ओनली सेवन धातु Here the word dhatu is applicable for dosha, is applicable for dhatu, is applicable for mal. This word is a broad spectrum understanding in this context. So Ayurveda always emphasizes to the student: tell me the context, tell me the reference where this word has been come, because according to the references, the meaning may change. So here dhatu word is related with dosha, dhatu, and mal. so whatever the procedures whatever the management you do that makes the samaha because whenever there is homeostasis physiology is there when the homeostasis is lost that is becomes the disease process equilibrium disequilibrium or unequilibrium okay so rhythm loss of rhythm so samaha means to back to their physiological condition back to your homeostasis then principle of homologous how you treat the patient sarvada sarva bhavanam samanyam vruddhi karanam ras hetur visheshascha pravrutti uhyasit samanya ani vishesha siddhant my pitta is very hot pitta has a property hot and when i have the acidity i drink the milk milk is the best antacid so and when i eat the very very spicy food when i drink the alcohol my pitta get provoked so similar properties similar action similar substances are called as a samanya now here you can see our in colloquial language in marathi samanya means very casual that person is very samanya oh this is very special huh? but in ayurveda samanya is not casual this is terminology samanya is similar and vishesha is opposite aaj kai vishesh in marathi any special today no vishesh is not special vishesh is opposite here so eating spicy food will be samanya for pitta dosha because it will increase ha huh? vruddhi can you see samanyam vruddhi karanam and when you drink the milk ras that pitta will be get antacid 
So Vishesha Dravya always dilute the original thing. So there are different, still more concepts, but I will not go into much more details because the time restraint is there. But in Ayurveda, digestion concept is very important. And that's why Ayurveda talks about taste. Madhura, Amla, Lavana, Katutikta, Kashaya. Madhura is a sweet, Amla is a sour, Lavana is a salty. Katu is a pungent. Remember, Katu is not Kadu. Katu is not Kadu. This is terminology. Katu is pungent. Tikta is a bitter. And Kasha is astringent. So which test will make the uh, hyperactivity of Vata and which will make the balanced condition that is mentioned in this particular chart? Your teacher will explain to you. Then Prakriti is another important terminology. Prakriti hi shayra sarupam janma mananandra la bhavini avikarani doshasti. From birth to death, the predominant condition of Vata Pitta Kapha determines your biotype. This is a genetic disposition. And this is the beginning of my lecture. Ayurveda is a Shashvat because eternal, because it has a base of fundamental principles. Siddhanta. Siddhanta nam charak vimansthan. It is given clear cut definition. It's like a research. This is establishing the research. Parikshavir bhuvidam pariksham heturishcha sadhitva sthapete niranayama. So whatever the conclusion of the research is given by the Ayurvedic scientist. So I also appeal to all newcomers that I have my telegram uh, channel. You can just see a uh, search for BMS first. First, you have to download the, uh, the telegram app and then you can join my this particular group because I uh, would like to make a, always in communication with the uh, students. Okay. So thank you very much for giving me the nice opportunity for sharing of knowledge and propagating Ayurveda. I very much thankful to Dr. Subhash Vagya, sir, and all their teammates for giving me nice effort. I think I have concluded in within my period tenure that is 45 to 50 minutes. So if there are questions and answers, and if you have the time, I'm always ready to answer the questions. Thanks. Thank you very much, sir, for your beautiful uh, and excellent lecture on the subject and hopefully these the newly ent uh, entering boys, they have got something uh, to catch up on uh, with respect to these uh, terminologies. Slowly, slowly, uh, they will uh, catch up this uh, Shadrasas, even though they uh, not much in practice, but uh, what is in uh, practice that is to be implemented again in a clinical practice. So um, I think you have touched many things, many Siddhantas of Ayurveda also, Tridosh, Panchamabhuta, Shadrasa. And uh, hopefully these boys, uh, slowly, slowly, they are uh, coming, uh, they, are, they, they are coming to know what, uh, what they are supposed to undergo through. So thank you very much, sir. And uh, once again, and, 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 and just, I'm, uh, I express my profound gratitude towards you for uh, accepting our invitation at the very, very short notice and you are always available for us and uh, for this your kind uh, good gesture we have something to give you and your gift has been already uh, dispatched today morning itself you will receive in three days thank you sir. thank you very much thank you sir. if there are any questions you can ask the sir Students, if you have any uh, questions related to any terminology of Ayurveda, if anything you uh, see, uh, you are not supposed to uh, understand each and everything, every minutes of it. But uh, if you are having any doubt about it, uh, you can ask and get your ideas clear. Of course, you can also ask me after uh, your session, you can ask me anytime on my WhatsApp, on my mail, there is no problem. I will be always there. And, and if you want to know Ayurveda further, there are a lot of YouTube videos of the uh, respected sir, uh, a lot of videos are there on YouTube. You can go through and uh, enhance your knowledge. So thank you. Thank you very much, sir, once again. Thank you. Uh, we will stop here for a day. Okay. Thank and you, uh, before... Um, the, can I leave uh, this one, you see? Uh,
just a minute, sir. Uh, before that, I will ask my uh, deputy, Dr. Shrikan, uh, sir, to uh, give a vote of thanks. Dr. Shrikan, sir, please. I think uh, he had left the meeting, but uh, I thank you once again, sir, and I thank everyone. Thank you. So we can, uh, you can leave now, sir. Thank you. So with yes. this, I declare that the session is over for today. Tomorrow we will meet again, same time as today's.